A pebble is a perfect creature equal to itself, mindful of its limits, filled exactly with pebbly meaning. Hi, I'm Helen Sword, and this is Helen's Word. Those opening lines from Spigneu Hubert's poem Pebble beautifully sum up the pleasure and satisfaction of holding a pebble, a perfect creature equal to itself, in the palm of our hand. For today's WordCraft workout, we're going to look at how words, like pebbles, can be carefully selected and then piled one upon the next to create sculptures, seashores, universes. For this exercise, you'll need a sample of your own writing, several pages long, preferably printed out in hard copy so that you can mark it up with colored pencils or highlighters. So gather your materials, and when you're ready, let's put your writing through a workout. I'd like to start by looking at a paragraph that appeared in The Economist in December 2020 as part of an article called A Universe of Stones. It chronicles the creative work of Rory McCormick, a Brighton fisherman who fashions and displays entire sculptures built from pebbles. The unnamed author of The Economist article offers us a beautiful description of the Brighton beaches where McCormick finds his materials. Pebbles, as opposed to stones, have certain qualities. They're smoothed by wind or water, and mostly of a size that fits the hollow of the palm of a hand. There are plenty here. 614 million, 600,000, 600, pub quizzers say. Graded as the beach descends, the largest, those offering the best grip to the waves, are flung above the high tide line. The smallest congregate and chorus at the edge of the sand. A shingle beach is a transient thing, edged continually sideways by longshore drift that follows the wind. Each pebble is also a work in progress, from commanding cliff to silt, bean to nothingness. This lyrical passage is just over 100 words long, yet It's full of treasures, carefully chosen words collected into skillfully crafted sentences that build one upon the next to create complex meaning, just like a sculpture made of pebbles. For example, alongside concrete objects such as pebbles, stones, beach, sand, shingle, cliff, and silt, We also find grand atmospheric nouns, wind, water, waves, juxtaposed with corporeal nouns that bring that great sweeping landscape down to a human scale, hollow, palm, hand, grip. Active verbs such as smooth, grade, fling, congregate, and chorus. Describe a living landscape in constant flux, where even a pebble or cliff becomes a symbol of transience rather than permanence. The only abstract language in the passage occurs right at the beginning, where we learn that pebbles have certain qualities. And then again in the final sentence, which ends with the existential phrase, being to nothingness. 
The power of this paragraph, in other words, has been generated by the author's skillful accretion of concrete images and abstract ideas into a coherent whole. So how can you, too, turn a pile of pebbles into a grand rhetorical sculpture? Choose a paragraph from your writing sample and start by noting whether the nouns and verbs that you have used are concrete, abstract, or a mix of both. Concrete language engages your reader's senses and places them directly in the scene, whereas abstract language requires much more cognitive effort. So the author of a well-constructed sentence or paragraph is always attentive to the balance of concrete imagery and abstract ideas. Next, read each sentence aloud, paying careful attention to word choice, rhythm, syntax, and sound. Each word, each pebble, must not only be carefully chosen, but also just as carefully placed in relationship to the others around it. Have you tossed your pebbles together into a heap or piled them up one upon the next to create a harmonious whole? I'll finish up here with the final lines of Herbert's poem in which the word pebbles could just as well be replaced with words. Pebbles cannot be tamed. To the end, they will look at us with a calm and very clear eye. Thanks for showing up to write, and I'll see you next time.